We are here today on the CSU campus here at the CSU Health Network. We are sitting today in the Still Point Reflection Room and with me joining me today is Vivian Ephraim Sum App who is the manager of well-being initiatives here with the CSU Health Network. And um, Vivian is here to talk to us about stress and stress that occurs specifically with college age students. Why don't we just start off with maybe how would you define stress? What, what do you feel like stress is? And is there such a thing as good stress? And what might too much stress look like? Yeah, so, you know, it's really common to vilify stress. You know, we say, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed and I need to reduce my stress. But in fact, we all perform well under a certain mm -hmm. amount of stress mm -hmm. and stress can be very motivating. Mm -hmm. For example, like we have a new job and we're excited to go do it or maybe we're an athlete and we have the stress of performing mm -hmm. and we realize we've done enough training. So stress really is a physiological response to a challenge in our life, an everyday activity. Mm -hmm. And normally we're meeting a stressor and then our body is recovering, we're meeting another stressor, our body's recovering. So that might be considered something that we call eustress, mm -hmm. EU stress, mm -hmm. which is basically good stress. Right. And then sometimes we actually move more into de-stress, which is when we are basically having chronic stress and we can't really catch a break. Mm -hmm. And that might be that we're not resting well, we're not recovering well, we don't have good coping strategies, mm -hmm. we're experiencing too much too fast, yeah. um, and we don't have an opportunity to integrate all of that. And we can have signs of that, including somatic signs like headaches, mm -hmm. digestive issues, Maybe we're experiencing a lot of um, muscle tension mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's the type of stress that we do want to take care of. There's also some really interesting research with college students about stress enhancing performance. Mm -hmm. And so if we start to normalize that when we have a challenge, we're going to have a physiological response. Maybe our heart rate will start increasing or maybe we'll start sweating. Mm -hmm or maybe we'll start to have like a lot of focus or muscle tension. Mm -hmm. And seeing those signs as an opportunity that we are actually about to learn something, we're about to actually perform something that maybe we haven't done before, like public speaking, right. and seeing that as good stress. Mm -hmm. And when we start to realize that that's performance enhancing, we might actually not try to avoid it. We might actually move more towards it. Mm -hmm. And if we see that as an opportunity, then we're actually going to, according to research, be able to perform really well. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that's kind of exciting in the stress research is to realize that the right amount of stress with the right amount of resources can actually help us learn and perform well. Mm -hmm. A moment ago, you talked about distress. And mm -hmm. what are there certain cycles in the course of a semester where a college student might find themselves more on that side as opposed to good stress? We do have a national college health assessment. Mm -hmm. And so we know that students are reporting that one of the things that causes stress for students or maybe a situation where I feel overly stressed is, of course, academics. Right. That usually increases over the semester, certainly is heightened around midterms. Right. Because unfortunately, our faculty are not all coordinating <laughs> about when, when things are due. Um, the second thing that college students experience is stress around finances. That's mm -hmm. the other reported thing. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we also hear from students on the National College Health Assessment that career and work concerns are the next mm -hmm. biggest stressor, mm -hmm. family issues are the next one, and then personal relationships. Oh, okay. And then the last one that's really interesting, and you address this, is procrastination. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that thing that we do where we avoid things because we think we have to do it perfectly or we're just waiting for the right time to do something, that can also cause us quite a bit of stress. Mm -hmm. We do know that there are things that can help us cope with stress, so time management is mm -hmm. one of them. Exercise, proper nutrition, which I know our health and exercise science <laughs> students are really good at, yeah. and there's a number of other things, meditation, yes. doing things that we enjoy, making time for social connections connections, all of those can be incredible for coping with stress. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on the individual about which one actually or which set of coping strategies are the best for us. Mm -hmm. So some of us are really motivated to take care of our bodies mm -hmm. and 
We can maybe even get in a flow state with exercise or hiking or things mm -hmm. like that. And you know, some of us might be enjoying other things to cope with stress, Absolutely. like spending time with our spiritual community mm -hmm. or social connection. Mm -hmm. So finding what coping strategy works for each mm -hmm. individual is really important. Mm -hmm. Can too much stress affect our health and our quality of life? Yeah, definitely, in, in really all areas. Mm -hmm. So we can have a physical impact to stress, we can have social impacts, we can have cognitive impacts, mm -hmm. and we can have emotional impacts. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Long term, you can kind of see what the demographics are around long term health issues. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. cardiovascular issues, definitely issues with our body, you know, that might require things like going to a physical therapist right. to address back and neck pain. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we see at the CSU Health Network, and this is something that surprises students, is one of the most used services at the CSU Health Network is actually physical therapy. Oh. Because students are experiencing chronic neck and back pain from maybe um, all the stress that they're holding in their bodies. Right. So social media has become a big factor for many of our lives. Do you feel that social media has any sort of influence on college students' stress levels? Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that we have social media and it's 24-7 mm -hmm. means that we might be up late looking at screens and this can impact our sleep. Mm -hmm. So learning how to manage just the amount of blue light that we're taking mm -hmm. in on our devices is definitely an issue. Mm -hmm. The other thing is is that 24-7 we can be socially comparing ourselves to others mm -hmm. and that can be that can really heighten our stress. Mm -hmm. We also know that there's potential for cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. And even beyond that, you know, sometimes there's also potential for somebody comments on your social media and it, it lands in a way that feels stressful to you or you see something distressing on social media and you know so there's the fact that we don't have these boundaries mm -hmm. around when we're getting information and we actually have to regulate ourselves around the use of social media mm -hmm. is really important to notice so um, the other thing I want to say about social media is that it can also have some benefits so mm -hmm. For example, it can connect us to community. Mm -hmm. If we are feeling distressed, we might find comfort there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, social media has its benefits, mm -hmm. but it also has some things that we have to watch out for. Mm -hmm. A moment ago, you had talked about some health behaviors that we in college campuses can do to manage our stress. Have you at the CSU Health Network seen, or do you have reference to other behaviors that maybe students would want to watch out for that are not as productive in managing stress? Yeah. So. There's a couple, one of them, I mean, I was just presenting to some faculty and they brought up the issue of, in the culture of you know, academia, sometimes pulling on lighters is considered mm -hmm. a bit of bravado. Mm -hmm. So that would be an example of it, that you know, long-term is not a good coping strategy, mm -hmm. like cheating your sleep is mm -hmm. not a good idea. Excellent. And along with that are the things that we do in order to stay up, so excessive use of caffeine. Another one is, you know, sometimes one of our coping strategies might be to use substances to relax. Mm -hmm. So we really have to regulate that, you know, is, are we using in moderation, are we overusing? Mm -hmm. You know, for some folks that that might be one way that you might want to relax, but we also know that, for example, the use of alcohol and certain substances actually affects our quality of sleep. Mm -hmm. So we might think, oh, I'm going to take a drink or I'm going to use a substance and then I'm going to be able to fall asleep. But in fact, it actually affects your quality of sleep. Mm -hmm. The other things that we might need to look at is procrastination, mm -hmm. overcommitment. You know, sometimes we feel like we have to do everything at once mm -hmm. instead of saying, this is what I need to do right now and I can let this other thing go mm -hmm. for another time. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that might be an issue is negative self-talk. You know, where we say to ourselves, you can't do this, um, this is too hard for you. Mm -hmm. And so we actually avoid something that feels stressful. And in the long run, that doesn't actually help us. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking ourselves, what are the steps that I can take to actually be okay with doing this thing? Is there support that I can find? So that sort of looking for support might be really important. So not avoiding things, but actually asking ourselves, how can I manage this situation? Here at the CSU Health Network, I'm sure there are just a host of services that are available, and I'm wondering if you could speak to just maybe a few that students can take advantage of if they're searching for help um, in managing their stress over the course of this um, next semester. Yeah, so I'll start with some of our online resources because I think that sometimes, 
you know, some of us like to do a little research. So we have a wonderful um, portal called you at CSU where you can find just about anything at the university. So for example, if one of the things that you're stressed about is finding a job, you might want to get on you at CSU and find out where can I find a job at CSU? Where can, where can I get, you know, support for a career? Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to find uh, some assistance for time management with like planning out your semester, mm -hmm. that might be going to tilt. But again, you at CSU would be a perfect place to sort of start to ask your questions and then it'll actually direct you to the appropriate resources on campus because our whole campus is involved with student well-being. So mm -hmm. we just want to just mention that. We're not the only act in town. Right. If part of our stress is that we don't have a group of friends, you know, we don't have social connections, we also have a wonderful app called Nod that helps, it's kind of a self-coaching app that helps us through those kind of awkward first moments of developing mm -hmm. social connection mm -hmm. and also celebrates the successes of like showing up at a party or talking to somebody in your class. Mm -hmm. So not as a wonderful resource. And then actually at the CSU Health Network, we have lots of groups. Mm -hmm. So and there's skills groups. Mm -hmm. One of the groups that I teach is mindfully managing stress. So mm -hmm. it's all the maybe mindfulness practices that you can use to manage mm -hmm. stress. But we also have a group for social anxiety. We have a group for students that might be experiencing depression. We have a group for students that are trying to figure out what their values are. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different types of groups at, C at the CSU Health Network. We have a wide range of mental health support, mm -hmm. including, including individual counseling, psychiatry. And we also have a lot of other health services, so dental, optometry, and all sorts of things. So, Sometimes what we need is actually to go see a doctor and find out, you know, why is it that I'm not sleeping well? Mm -hmm. Maybe there's yeah. some underlying uh, physical reason for that. Mm -hmm. So, or why is it that I can't focus? Maybe there's some underlying physical mm -hmm. reason for that. Mm -hmm. So we also have a podcast called Mental Health Musings. And then we have a lot of online resources. We have a daily recovery campaign. We have a number of other wonderful things that serve students' health in different ways. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we also have this wonderful reflection space um, with a sleep pod um, behind us. So this is a wonderful place for uh, students who need to chill out. Mm -hmm. And there's also other places on campus like that too. Mm -hmm. But our sleep pod is a wonderful place for students that might need a restorative nap for like 20 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm.